this is a WK181Z Gen 2. A brand new 180 variant from Kodiak Defense. This one chambered in 762 by 39. Now, this rifle, or the previous version of this rifle, from what I understand, had a gigantic bucket list of problems, namely the gas system, which to be fair is also on the other 180s, uh, magazine issues with Stanag magazines and not AK magazines, as well as a host of other issues that really prevented it from being popular. It's why you don't see them very often on Reddit or any of the other forums or on YouTube. But this is trying to be different. This is the A2 variant. So it has all the A2 features from the other uh, 180, the 556 version. It's got the bolt hold open. It's got the updated design. It's got a updated gas system, which I will show later when I take it apart. It's got the updated handguard. And it can take AR-15 trigger groups, trigger packs, as far as I'm aware, and also uh, standard AR-15 fire selectors. Now, this rifle, I'll put, a, put it up on screen, but this rifle was advertised as coming with an A2 pistol grip, but it actually came with a Magpul MOEK grip. And it was also advertised to come with a standard was a carbine m4 carbine stock it actually came with an moe stock so i have no idea what the standard configuration for this thing is um if it comes with micro parts or if it doesn't mine did i don't know uh i did put an moe or magpul mvg rather uh foregrip on it but this thing out of the box was built feels incredibly solid. The only creaking is from uh, the stock around the buffer tube, but that's nothing unique to this uh, platform. Everything else is really solid. The handguard feels great, although if anyone was thinking if they could get a reverse suppressor around this i don't think you could um there's just not enough room don't break my pc <laughs> gotta be careful this thing is longer than uh my other guns because it has an 18 and a half inch barrel meaning it's non-restricted uh, of course like the other 180s it has the bolt open and the um non-reciprocating charging handle um, one thing to note that I was not aware of with the other 180, uh, the Gen 2, is that these will not lock back on an empty mag. They'll just slide right over it. If you want to lock it back, you have to engage the bolt hold open. Can't do it any other way. I haven't shot it yet. I will hopefully very soon. And you bet your ass I'm putting the shittiest surplus stuff through this. If I can't handle that, it's not worth running. <laughs> um, I will cut the video now, and I will take it apart. I'll set up the desk for me to take this apart properly. And I'll show the internals of what this thing looks like. So, this part I have to redo because for whatever reason camera was shaking like it was an earthquake i don't know maybe it was an earthquake i don't think so but we'll see so to disassemble push pin out pull it from the other side push in this let it pivot out
pull these springs out. Push this back. Got your standard bolt carrier, kind of. This is apparently a bit different from the other Gen 2s, but I don't have one to compare to, so uh, for those of you that do, you can go take a look at it like that. This, I believe, is unchanged. Now this should just pop out. This pin. I don't know why this pin gets so stuck. It is quite strange. There we go. Okay. Pull that. Now we can separate. Um, so the standard lower receiver, kind of standard, Actually, not at all standard. I don't know why I said that. This takes AK mags. Uh, AK mags hang on to this piece right here. To the front. Latch on. One thing I forgot to mention, while well, you can obviously do the paddle like that, it has these grooves on either side that you can push with your index finger. For me, it's actually not the ergonomic, it's kind of stiff, so it's better to just use a paddle. Uh, I did change out the end plate too. It comes with just the standard end plate. I wanted one with uh, sling mounts, so there you go. Otherwise, you know, from here onwards, it's a standard A2. This is the different part. Let me put this off to the side. So, let me get this handguard off. Okay, this is the handguard, all the screws are off. Handguard just comes off. And you have system. Now, word about the handguard. It's a nice handguard, 15 inch, feels decent. It actually feels really nice. If you don't want pick rail on the top you're probably not going to like this <laughs> um i don't really like it it makes it harder to see clamp towards the front <sighs> and also i don't need it for ir devices or lights or any other thing on top it's just completely useless to me i might look at changing this for the tna coronas mlock handguard um and also part of the reason Having to take out eight screws is a pain in the ass. The Coronis M-Lock one that I had on my um, MRA that you can check out, MRA video, it's just two tightening screws at the bottom. And it just, it holds, it's, you know, I've never had any problems with anything coming loose. So I don't know what the hell is up with that. And uh, one of these screws here, I think is this one, already starting to strip. I haven't done any torque wrenching of any kind at all. Now, they include extra screws. Um, it's somewhere. I have to find the bag. They include extra handguard screws. But if they include extra handguard screws, that means they expect this to happen. Like, come on, guys. I've taken this handguard off four times total. And one of them is already starting to strip, and I'm using the proper size screwdriver or hex screwdriver whatever no torquing no loctite no nothing it's just already starting to strip so i might even if i don't get a faux suppressor to wrap around the barrel i might just change out the handguard um anyway this is the new gas system no front and no plug, no nothing. It's completely smooth. Has a shroud around the, what is it, the 
piston and the spring. And the brass bushing here is standard, which apparently wasn't before. So hopefully this is more durable. There was a video from a guy that did a breakdown of why all these 180s were failing. He theorized that it was that this was just wiggling way too much uh, when shooting and the tension that it caused to this part here was causing it to fail. So hopefully this breaks. When I do go shoot it, this will have um, about 200, 250 rounds through it of the cheapest surplus you can get. And we'll see how it cleans, how it holds up. I'll do that video later, but for now, I will put the rifle back together. And I will go over a couple more things to talk about with this rifle. So, there is one problem that still persists on these guns. Now, I'm going to do this very, 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 very slowly. This bolt must not move. The cam pin, the bolt must stay forward. Cam pin must stay forward. And you must do this very, very gently. Otherwise, it can get stuck. And if it gets stuck, it is an absolute pain in the ass. Oh, fuck. Like that. I will be back. This is a serious problem with the 180s. Okay, I've got the bolt in after trying to free it. Push these in. Close this up. There you go. Push this pin through. Reassembled. That is a major problem. They really need to try and fix this. I have no idea how the hell you fix that. I'm not a gunsmith or an engineer, or any of the such. Please fix it. <laughs> Do something to fix it, Kodiak. Now this last part is just going to talk about this gun itself, and what its status in Canada is. TLDR, it's complicated. Um, the Liberal Party of Canada introduced an amendment to Bill C-21, as many Canadians know, that would essentially prohibit all centerfire semi-automatic rifles. Basically all of them. Very few exceptions. Even things like the M1 Garand. Now, some positive, if yet confusing news this week. The NDP and Bloc have signaled that they might not vote for the amendment. If both abstain, I believe it will pass, but if even one of them votes against it, I oh, know they both have to vote against it, don't they? I believe they both have to vote it down. Um, if that's the case, this dies, right? The bill that dies, but there's nothing stopping the liberals from introducing just a fresh bill uh, instead of an amendment or issuing an order in council like they did in May 2020. Now, this gun itself, surprisingly, wasn't actually mentioned by name. The other 180 variants were, most of them. This one wasn't for some reason, probably because it's so new, um, but it would be defined as a variant and banned anyway uh, in the future if that amendment were to go through. So this video, uh, who knows how long this video will be relevant to Canadians. Maybe it's only relevant for five months, 
Maybe it's relevant for longer. I don't know. If you want to pick one up, um, you can do so at TNA. Maybe just order the rifle and see what furniture comes with it. Uh, before you order any extra furniture and waste money like I did. Uh, otherwise, that will just about do it for this. I will have a short video on this. I will also have a video on the Glock 24 by Black Box Customs. That should come in the next two weeks. And I have some other guns I can do some shorts on. Maybe the Durango Olympia uh, as well. If you want to check out any of the previous ones, they got the MRA Renegade, Canada's coping rifle as well as a Ruger 10.22 in a uh, AR style stock and a Viz 100 video as well, as well as uh, three new shorts that are up on the channel. So if you like this video, give it a like, share it with anyone that might need an overview. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I'll do my best to answer and subscribe because there will be more videos on this for sure thanks for watching